Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and thanks for stopping by to check out the Atelier Shadow Box tutorial. It's a card. It's a 5x7 and excuse the shadows. It's kind of sunshiny and I'm right by the window. Alright, so it's a 5x7 shadow box card. You don't have to use the same paper that I did. You can use anything that you'd like. I will be teaching for uh, both in this tutorial. So whether you are following along with the Atelier paper collection to get the same look as this, or you're using a different one. Okay, let's just dive right on in and go straight to the materials list. Materials. So for this shadow box card, you can pick and choose what you want to use. You can use any paper, you can use any flowers, and any embellishments. So the first thing is, is we're going to need two 8.5 by 11 sheets of white cardstock, or if you choose, you can use any solid color. After I give you the measurements for what we need to cut each down to, you'll want to save your uh, leftover scraps. I chose the Stamperia Atelier and that is what I am going to be using for my card and I can get several cards out of this one. So any uh, paper that you have, but that is what I'm using. I'm also going to be incorporating this wooden little ladder into my shadow box. I think it's going to look really cool. Now you don't have to, uh, it's just something I wanted to uh, try out and we sell these in our store. If you have any leaves or anything, you can add them. I have this little uh, leaf that I have inked and placed my glossy accents on, so I'm just gonna use one. Flowers. So for flowers, I'm looking in my stash now, and I have a bunch of the Tim Holtz Small Bouquet flowers, and I'll take some off here, and, and I can also ink any if I choose to. So I'll have a white flower. Also, I have these really pretty uh, baby blue flowers. And I can't remember what they're called in my store, but they're little roses. And I think I'll throw a couple of those in. And then I have some yellow roses. And I believe I have all these in my store if you're looking for it. But I think that that's a great offsetting color for my paper. One thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to be using some washi tape with some gold foil. You can use solid uh, gold uh, washi tape. You can use no washi tape at all. But this is what's going to frame the inside of my shadow box. And I'll bring this up. I think we have a few of these left in our store. So. And of course, you're going to need your glue. And I'm going to use the Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue for this. On one of your pieces of cardstock, and you can use 65 pound, 80 pound, 110. I'm using a heavier cardstock, 110. So on one of your sheets, cut it to 7 inches by 9 inches, and then get your scoring board out. After cutting, you should have some leftover pieces. Just set that aside. Place your paper so you are 9 inches across the board. You're going to score at a half inch. You're going to score at one inch. We're going to come over here and we're going to score at eight inches. Oops, I jumped the track. And then we'll do eight and a half inches. Okay. Let's turn it now. We're going to score at a half, half inch and one inch. We'll come over here. We will score at six inch and six and a half inch. Okay. 
So this is what yours should look like. Let's grab our scissors. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is, you see down here, I think you can see that, you're going to have uh, a score here and here. It kind of looks like a square, big square. We're going to cut up on that inner score line, and then on the top one, we're going to snip over. See? All right, we're going to come over here. You have the inside score line. Let's cut up to that top score line, and then we'll cut that out. Just like that. Okay, let's do the same down here. The inside score line, the top one, well it was the top until I turned it. So inside score line to the top one and over. Perfect. Alright, we are going to need our ruler and we will need our craft knife and Let's get those out. You'll probably want a, uh, a cutting mat for sure, and I'll grab mine in a moment, and a pencil with an eraser. Let's grab our ruler and our pencil. Now you have a score line here, and you have an inner score line. From that inner score line, I want you to measure over a half inch and make a little pencil mark here. And we'll move this and do the same thing so that we can get our line straight when we do this. And we'll lightly use our pencil. Over here, that inner score line, we're going to measure in a half inch. And I'm going to make two lines here, one here. That's just easier for me to line up, so that's why I do that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to line those up and I'm going to look to make sure I am straight. Now if you don't get completely straight, that's okay because we can even that up when we start to cut. So with your pencil, make a very light line and you can just draw that whole line. Okay? I'm a little off there, but that's okay. So this is what I've done. I think you can see that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to find my little marks, line those up, and I'm going to do a very light line, just so I can see. Okay, down here we're going to do the same thing. You have a bottom score line and a top one, and we are going to measure about a half inch up. pencil mark. And I'll do it over here too so that I can line up. And now I'm going to place my ruler so that I can get straight. And I'll just lightly draw across. See? Okay, I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to do the same thing. That top score line, measure up a half inch couple different times and draw your line over this way. Once you've done so that you kind of look like this, we'll be erasing any pencil and stuff, but what we're looking to do is the inside square we have here, we're going to use our craft knife and cut that out. Uh, before you start cutting, kind of look and make sure that you are semi-even with your lines and stuff. I can see where I need to fix a couple of places. but. Um, that's what we're going to do, and then we will start cutting out our middle square. Once you cut out the inner, and some people may have a paper cutter like this. I actually cut mine out and then cleaned it up with that. Uh, keep this, and this is what you should have right now. So this is now ready for us to fold on the score lines and then we can burnish it down with our scoring tool. But we will just fold and we're just folding one way 
and I will find my tool in just a moment. Okay, so this is the back side, and when you pull in your sides, it should fit. If you need to do any trimming up through here, do so. Let's set that off to the side. Let's grab our next piece of cardstock we had. We're going to cut this to 7 inches by 10 inches. Found my scoring tool. Okay, we are 7 inches by 10 inches. At 5 inches, let's score. And then we're just going to fold that in half. That is our card base. And if you notice, with this, once all the sides are pulled up and in, that's going to fit right on top nicely onto your card base. Perfect. Let's set this off to the side. I'm going to put this off to the side. Let's start with this, and we're only going to glue on one side. So what we're going to want to do is have our sides in. And here's our bottom flap, and all we're going to do is apply glue right here at the bottom so that it matches up there. And we're going to pull that in, make sure we are flush on the side, even. If you need to do some trimming before you do this, do so. Okay, now we'll do the same over here. Just the bottom part. So we need to leave this open to slide our paper in. And we will match that up. Okay, so that is the back and this is the front. We will be covering everything with cardstock. So one thing I wanted to say about your trimming, if you did it by hand, Make sure that you do have all your, uh, before you do this, make sure you erase all your pencil marks. If you need to trim a little more to get yourself even, do so. And here's the beauty of this. When we start cutting strips um, to cover our sides, if you're a little off, it isn't going to show because you can place your paper, decorative paper, right over that uneven edge and uh, back behind is where we will be adding some of this and then covering it with our washi tape to give that inner border. So uh, no worries if you're a little uneven. So I'm looking at the front of my frame. My top flap is not glued and I'm going to set that to the side. Let's get into our paper. If you're using the same paper as me in your paper pack, you will find this sheet, and on the back it looks like this. So this is what I'm after. So what we want to do with this is our final piece is going to be 4 and 15 sixteenths by 6 and 15 sixteenths. So those of you not using this paper, using something else, that's the measurements you're going to want to cut your decorative paper. Uh, those of us that are using the same paper, we're going to measure over 4 and 15 sixteenths and cut. And this is what you should have. We're going to measure over this way 6 and 15 sixteenths and cut. So everyone should have their sheet now, their decorated paper, 4 and 15 sixteenths inch by 6 and 15 sixteenths inch. Now here's the top of our frame. What we're going to do is just slide that right in to take a look. Bring it all the way down to the bottom and push it back against those flaps. You should have a nice fit there. So this is where we're going to add some glue and we're going to go about, we're about a half inch or so. Just enough all the way around. Well, except for the top right now because we haven't glued that down. Okay. Well, we can do it right now because this is what is going to close us up here. So I got glue all the way around. This is going to be my top. Make sure that you don't put this in the wrong way. So here's the front. And I'm going to slide this right on in. Bring it all the way down to the back and press. Now, what I can do now is kind of turn this over, make sure 
kind of press a little bit to get that glue to just to stick enough for me and make sure that I'm even on the sides. I'm just going to give that a little pinch there, bring that over, pinch there. So now I know it's in the right spot, I can just kind of push it down and make sure that that stays. I'm going to use my tool. Okay, Let's close this up and all we have to do is bring this down over the top. So my glue kind of got away from me there. Make sure I have enough here. I'm going to hold this upright, bring in my sides, make sure it's straight, and I'll press. Okay. Now if you get a little bit off, it's okay. You see I have a gap there? I'll fix that in a moment. I just want to make sure that my sides are down, and then I'll press that down. So there is the inside. And we'll be gluing this down and attaching it soon. But let's finish this, it's easier. And then we'll attach it to the card front. If you are not using the same decorative paper as me, what you're going to want to do is cut two pieces of half inch by seven inch. And then you're going to want to cut two pieces that are half inch by five inch. Those of us that are using the Atelier, you'll find this sheet in your paper path. Right now we're looking at it, the stripes are going this way, so we're going to turn it, the sides, to like this, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure over seven inches and cut. I'm going to measure over a half inch and cut, measure over half inch and cut, I'll measure over two more times a half inch and cut. So that will give me four half inch strips. Those of you that are using the same paper, you should have four half inch by seven inch strips. Take two of these, and I'm going to cut two at a time. I'm going to measure over five inches and cut. All right, I found it easier to cut my half inch strips on this than my other cutting. Okay, so let's verify that you're going to fit and you may go over the edge of this, which is nice. Now, if your cutting is off and you can still see your whitener and even, you'll just push it over a little bit anyways because you're going to have a little bit of a white border over here. So verify you are fitting. If you need to trim top to bottom, do so. Okay, we're going to glue the two sides down and leaving a little bit of a white border on the sides. And what you can do for the top and bottom part is to measure this to accurately fit See here how I've left a little bit of a white border here and over here. Down here, I can just trim this about a sixteenth of an inch so that it gives me the white border there too. So I'll do that with both of these. I've got my sides down. Now it's always better to cut a little longer than a little shorter. So with the shorter pieces, what you're going to do is match up your corners and the top. You'll let it fall over here and you can make a pencil mark if you need to trim. And I do because I need to be just a little bit shorter, like a sixteenth of an inch. And you cut to trim to fit. Okay, next thing I want to do is once I have that where I know they match up, this is where I can cut at an angle so that it's angled. And then when it's placed, it looks like a frame. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just kind of hold it there the best I can. Find the starting point and clip to the edge. Now I can apply glue and glue that down. And I am going to leave a little bit of a white border because that's how I did my sides and I think that'll look really good. Now for this I've cut this at an angle as well. I fit to make sure it fits and I'm going to glue down my bottom piece. 
this is what mine looks like. You should have a beautiful frame whether you use this paper or not. It's time to get into our inner frame. So we have a bunch of leftovers here. So you should have a strip like this. We're going to all measure over. Let's do 6 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. I'm going to, here's my piece, I'm about one and a half inches this way. That is perfect because this will be divided in half. Um, this is one and a half by six and fifteen sixteenths, and we're going to end up cutting it at a ha uh, three quarters of an inch. So I have my washi tape, and I am just going to cover this. And just keep going, and I'll wrap my edges there around the back. If your washi tape is weak and um, you need to add glue to keep it down, do so. So we don't want that lifting. So let's continue to cover our piece with some gold foiled. If you have overlapping lines like I do, don't worry about it because that's the side that's not going to be seen anyway. So here is my strip. I'm going to measure over three quarters of an inch, which is the halfway point in between here, and cut. I've got my two side pieces here. So on where I can see my overlapping, that is definitely going to be. And I'm going to add glue to at least half of this, and I can wipe off any excess. All I'm going to do now is stick this in, tuck it under, and move it all the way back to the corner. If you need to use score tape, use score tape. Okay, so that's what we should have. We're going to do the same thing for this side. I've got mine in. You should have another strip here. Let's see how wide this one is. This is also one and a half inches wide. It's perfect. We're going to measure over four and 15 sixteenths and cut. Let's apply our washi tape completely across, just like we did for those. Okay, now all we have to do is the same thing. We're gonna measure over three quarters of an inch and cut that right in half. And we're gonna do the same thing. We'll apply glue to at least half of it. We'll tuck it back behind, up here, and we'll do the same for down here. I have mine down. Now, because the washi tape has a certain type of material text uh, slipperiness to it, um, I do want to double check to make sure that I got my glue all the way in contact so it doesn't bubble up anywhere. And so far, that looks pretty good. If you were following along with the same paper collection, this is in our reserve pile, scrap pile. I have cut a 1 8 inch long strip. It's very narrow. I'm going to cut another one. And those of you using a different uh, paper collection and you've got uh, designer um, shapes and all that, you might want to grab some solid, more solid colored for this too. Because what we're going to do is if you see where the edge of where the washi tape meets the edge of this, this is where we're just going to lay a very thin piece and then look, it looks very nice. So I'm going to cut another 1 8 inch strip. And this is where this cutter comes in very handy because it's almost impossible for me to get a nice straight edge uh, using my other one. And it definitely doesn't tell me on my big one where that is. So I'm going to do the best I can here an attempt. Hopefully it's semi-straight. <laughs> okay, straight enough at the top for what I need. If I need another piece, I will. So I'm going to come right up to the little where the corner meets there. And I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to cut that to fit right to the corner down there. Okay, I think you can see that. I may have not had that in the way, so I'm going to apply glue 
Okay, we're going to do that again. I have another strip, and I'm going to measure to fit that, and then I'll glue that down. Now with my leftover pieces, I'm going to just bring that over, match it up with the sides of the other piece, and I will trim to fit and glue that down. I've got mine down. Let's grab our ladder, and this will fit in here perfectly and still make it in. And we're going to glue this down at an angle here. So, and this glue here that uh, I'm using is will work for wood. So I'm just going to apply the glue, and I'll let this sit once I get it in there. So I'm going to bring it down, in, and over, just like that. I'm going to give it a few moments. Mine seems to already be stuck, but I do want to make sure that it makes contact good there. If you are using the Atelier, you will find this sheet on the back. It looks like this. Now, the one I want, I cut out two, but the one I want to cut out is this one. And if you have any um, distress ink or brown inks, uh, you may want to ink around the edges. And then what we're going to do is remember this piece that we had from the middle of our cutout? We're going to apply glue and we're going to glue that down. And then we're going to cut out and around, leaving a little bit of a white border. If you're not using this uh, paper collection, Check your uh, check to see what you have in your paper collection, if any, anything that you can cut out paper-wise. Perhaps it's a tag or, or whatever, but uh, you, you'll want to maybe do something like that or just cluster your flowers at this point. So I have mine mounted on the white. I've glued it down. I did ink around my edges. So now I'm going to apply glue, and I'm going to be sticking this off at an angle here. So for me, because I'm not sure where it's going to hit on this ladder until I get it down, I'm just going to place my glue down all over this piece here. And where it hits, it hits. So I'm not going to take it all the way down to the bottom of my thing, just enough. And I'm going to burnish down, especially where it hits on the wood. That's going to help. And then when I go down against the the ladder step there, that will uh, grab. Okay, I'm going to give this a few moments. So far, so good. So this is how I plan to put my flowers and leaves. So I'm going to leave this up for just a moment, and you're going to want to pause your video, and I'm going to be gluing mine down, and I'll bring it up because I'm not quite glued down yet. But as you can see, out of the little blue flowers, I stuck one down here. I just littered a bunch of the white Tim Holtz bouquet flowers just here and there. I also stuck a blue flower back behind so it doesn't steal the show. And then I put a couple of the yellow ones, which really make all the colors pop, uh, right up front. Okay, I've got mine glued down. I added an extra few white flowers here and there to kind of balance me out a little bit. For the sides now, what you're going to do is you're going to cut 3 8 inch strips. So for this one, I'm going to cut 3 8 by 7 inches. And I'll do the same over here. So 2 3 8 inch by 7 inches. And then I'm going to need two pieces that are 3 8 inch by 5 inches. And for me, I'm going to go right back to this paper, if you're using the Atelier. And I think that's going to be too much. I'm going to go with the solid. So I'm going to cut my strips. I am going to glue them down. And then we're going to place this on our card. I've got my sides all down. I think it looks good. The next thing that you're going to want to do is grab your card base. And for me, I want to make sure I burnish down because I did not get a chance. 
So all we're going to do is apply glue to this entire piece and we will mount that on the top and it should even up just how it's supposed to be. So let's do that. I've got mine all glued down. To finish up, I do want to add some paper to the inside. So you should have a piece, if you're following along with me, like this. If you were to place it down, it's just enough. I am going to cut this down just a little bit. So if you're not using the same paper as me, what you're going to want to do is cut two panels from your paper pack that are four and three quarters inch by six and three quarters inch. So for us that are using this paper, I'll measure over four and three quarters inch. And I think what I'll do is then I will flip this around, measure over four and three quarters inch. Now all we have to do is we'll double these up. People that are following with the same paper will measure over six and three quarters inch and cut. I'm going to back this camera out a little bit so we can see. I'll apply glue to this side and I will center that in my card and glue that down and I will do the same over here. So there is the inside. So now all you have to do is either stamp your sentiment or if you'd rather stamp it on a white piece of cardstock, you can. And I'll show you what I'm doing with mine. So this is actually going to be the card for my mother, for her Mother's Day. And I stamped on some vel uh, vellum. And I just cut a piece. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that right on down. So when applying my vellum, I decided just to put glue up underneath the top. So that is left alone. And there is our shadow box card. It's complete, and I have plenty of paper to make more of these cards with that lovely atelier. Of course, any paper will work. And happy crafting, everybody, and I'll see you real soon with another mini album tutorial.